perfect in every way. And I'm grateful to him, since he is the one most deserving of being thanked for his favors. He is also the one from whose wrath and retribution we must protect ourselves most. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. All creation belongs to him, all command belongs to him, and we aspire to be admitted to Jannah, which belongs to him. I further bear witness that our Prophet and leader Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. His Prophet and a messengership are the last ones there will be in this world. O oh Allah, grant an abundance of your accommodation, protection, and blessings to your Prophet as well as to his esteemed family, noble companions, and all who continue to follow their path. My dear audience, I counsel all of you, as well as myself, to observe taqwa of Allah. May Allah grant all of you his mercy. When you observe taqwa of Allah, he will protect you. When you give for Allah, he will recompense you. When you are grateful to Allah, he will grant you even more. Therefore, servants of Allah, always let your primary objective be observing taqwa of Allah, the one whom you will inevitably have to meet, and there will be no escape from him holding you accountable for your deeds. May Allah grant all of you his mercy. You must further realize that taqwa of Allah enables you to attain all that is beneficial, and it does not yield anything detrimental. Therefore, you must make taqwa the path you tread towards all that is good, and away from all that is harmful. Allah has promised the people of taqwa salvation from all they fear and provision from where they do not anticipate. In addition, you must combine hope in Allah's reward with fear of His punishment and also continue to call upon Him in earnest. Allah said about His righteous servants, they hastened to perform righteous deeds, they called upon us with both hope and fear and they were humble towards us. Dear Muslims, Islam came to bring about all that is best for Allah's servants in this world, the hereafter, and in all circumstances in general. This applies to all realms, including beliefs, worship, transactions, customs, values, conduct, social ties, and interpersonal relationships. Thus, the teachings of Islam give order to all matters of a person's life in both this world and the hereafter. Dear Muslims, the deeds a person performs are either acts of worship, which his religious practice revolves around, or customary acts which set his life in order. The results of customary acts are tied to the intentions that a person has behind them. Good results in good and bad results in bad. In an authentic hadith, Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation or protection, said, Indeed, all actions are given consideration only according to the intentions behind them. And indeed, each person will be recompensed only according to what he intended. This was collected by Bukhari and Muslim. The truly successful among Allah's worshipping servants are those who choose the best path and strive to attain the highest of ranks. People's customs and practices have a strong influence upon their souls and lives overall. It is difficult for a person to break free from them or get rid of them. The innate disposition of human beings finds comfort in the things it becomes used to. Thus, people's customs and constant practices are part of their lives and are defining features of their cultures and civilizations. This is why the directives of Islam accommodate and acknowledge those practices and customs, provided that they are pleasing to Allah. As for those which are corrupt, the teachings of Islam prohibit them and do not accept them. A Shatibi, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, if customary practices were not given consideration, people would be made responsible for doing things beyond their ability. In addition, some have remarked that people both make customs and are also shaped by them. Others commented that people are a collection of practices that walk about the earth. They are products of their practices more so than their innate dispositions. My dear brothers, customs and practices result from one's environment and society, whether dignified or shameless, well-off or needy, knowledgeable or ignorant, sound or deviant. A wholesome life yields praiseworthy customary practices while an unwholesome life yields blameworthy ones. The habits and practices of any society are a reflection of its state and whether it is one of righteousness or impiety, fairness or bigotry. Righteousness comes from practices that are righteous and insolence comes 
from practices that are insolent. The more a society adheres to its religion, educates its people well, is advanced in knowledge, and has a high level of awareness, the more sound its customs and practices would be. And unsound customs and practices would not be prevalent in such a society. Sound practices arise from having noble character, a high standard of values, and integrity in general. Those stem from sound beliefs, proper religious practice, respectable role models, and well-instilled principles of dignity in matters of livelihood, earnings, and relationships. Unsound practices arise from deviant ideas, injustice, bigotry, arrogance, ignorance, and the desire to overpower others. Practices, habits, and customs are expressions of people's lives as well as the experiences of societies throughout the course of history with all its events, changes, and developments. Habits and practices have major effects since they can build and destroy, raise and lower, unite and divide. Dear Muslims, practices and customs make up a general code which people follow and base their behaviors upon and all the occurrences, situations, occasions and times of happiness or sadness they face. Those practices direct their words, interactions and all they choose to do or not do. That applies to things including foods, drinks, residences, vehicles, clothing, speaking, words, behaviors, regulations and policies. All of these are related to the needs people have in many realms, such as planning, administration, reform, business, commerce, endowments, oaths, vows, and so on. Practices and customs also impact the words and gestures used when greeting and welcoming others, like the salam, which is used by the people of Islam. Furthermore, people's customs and practices exhibit their nature and values when it comes to things like honoring guests, helping the needy, assisting those who come to a new land, and providing relief to the suffering. A person's instinct is the root of his customary practices. When an instinctive act is repeated, it eventually becomes a habit and custom. Thus, habits and customs develop in stages, and getting rid of them also happens in stages. The directives of Islam give consideration to the established practices and customs of people which serve their best interests. This can be understood from the generality of what the Prophet ﷺ once told the companions when he said, you are the ones who have better knowledge about the mundane matters of your lives. This is collected by Ahmed, Muslim, and Ibn Majah. The basic rule regarding this subject is that if there is any custom established among people which they continue to conform with, and there is no specific ruling in Islam concerning it, then that custom is to be given consideration in order to bring about the greatest benefit based on the objectives of Islam, not based on bigotry or personal motives. Thus, if a given custom, practice, or convention yields a greater overall good or averts an obvious harm and is not detrimental to society in any way, such a practice is acceptable and worthy of being implemented. Islam approves of practices which are sound and do not oppose its pristine teachings. Allah said to guardians, if any of you has enough wealth of his own, he must suffice with that and abstain from using any of the orphan's wealth. But if any of you is needy, he is only allowed to take from their wealth in an acceptable manner. In addition, Allah the Almighty said regarding the right of divorced nursing mothers, fathers must support the nursing mothers whom they divorced by supplying them with food, clothing, and financial support in an acceptable manner. The Prophet, may Allah grant commendation and protection, had once told Hind bint Utbah, may Allah be pleased with her, regarding the wealth of her husband, it is permissible for you to take what would suffice you and your children in an acceptable manner. My beloved audience, giving established customs and conventions due consideration results in doing what is best for the people of Islam. The directors of Islam are ones of benefit and mercy. Ibn Farhun, may Allah have mercy upon him, remarked that if any ruling is based on practices and customs, it remains valid according to their validity. This is why when any of Islam's directives is linked to people's customary practices, the ruling changes along with the practices and conforms to the practice that is current. Practices and customs change as societies develop, ideas change, and education spreads.
This leads to the acceptance of practices and customs which may not have been acceptable before. These things change along with changes in times, locations, circumstances, and people's ethics and conduct. An adage states that evidence for the strength of willpower can be found in the degree of readiness to leave what is customary. With all of that being said, practices, customs, conventions, and habits are permissible by default. However, it is possible for them to become acts of worship and also possible for them to become sins. This applies at the individual and collective levels. A hadith mentions that if someone sets a precedent that is praiseworthy in Islam, he shall earn rewards similar to those who followed him without their rewards being decreased in the least. In contrast, if someone sets a precedent that is blameworthy in Islam, he shall incur sin similar to those who followed him without their sins being decreased in the least. Allah the Most Exalted said to his messenger, accept what people do readily, command them to do what is acceptable, and turn away from the incident. May Allah bless us all by the glorious Quran and God is of his messenger. I say this much and I ask Allah to forgive all of us. Thus seek Allah's forgiveness as he is certainly the most forgiving, the bestower of mercy. All praise and gratitude are due to Allah for His favors and blessings. He is the one whose decree we are pleased with and to which we submit. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. This is a testimony we make so that it will be stored for us in preparation for the day when we will all be presented before Allah. I further testify that our Prophet and leader Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. He called to Allah's religion in both private and public. O oh Allah, grant your commendation, protection and blessings to your Prophet as well as to his esteemed family, noble companions, and all who continue to follow their path. Dear Muslims, sound customs and practices are a source of strength for any people, while unsound customs and practices weaken them, cause them to deviate from what is right, and lead them to blindly follow misguidance that may have been present among their predecessors. Islam's teachings warn against unsound customs, deviant habits, and blindly following wrong done by predecessors. Allah, who is perfect in every way, mentioned that the reasoning presented by people who do such things is that they say, we found our forefathers upon a certain path and we were certainly following their steps. They also say, we found our forefathers upon a certain path and we will certainly find guidance in their practices. This is an instance of blindly following the wrong others do relinquishing one's own mind and understanding of what is correct and depriving oneself of freedom that is constructive and productive. Unsound practices and customs put people through difficulty and can cause them to expend much effort, money and time. People adhere to those conventions to please others and avoid their criticism. As a result of those conventions, they may take it upon themselves to do things beyond their ability and do things which they detest and have no genuine desire to do. Moreover, what can be said when such practices are compounded with being in opposition to Islam's teachings, harmful to one's mind and health, or destructive to one's conduct and values? The esteemed scholar Ibn Qayyim, may Allah have mercy upon him, remarked that when a person adheres to unsound customs and practices and puts them ahead of Allah's directives and the teachings of Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, such a person will be affected by his innate disposition being corrupted, his heart being pervaded by darkness, his understanding becoming clouded, and his intellect being ruined. It is a phenomenon that a young person may end up being raised with until he is an adult, and which an adult may continue adhering to until he becomes elderly. My dear brothers, when we think about this concept, we can recognize it as certain blameworthy customs present in some societies as it relates to marriages, ceremonies, banquets, and formalities. People end up spending huge amounts for occasions like those, and even going into massive debt due to their customs and practices. As a result, visiting or communicating with such people ends up being a source of worry and frustration rather than a time of happiness. Visiting others is supposed to be done for providing comfort, solace, and good companionship. It is not for purposes such as boasting, pride, or showing off what one has, since these are motives which turn life into a constant cycle of worry, misery, and heavy burdens. Dear Muslims, it is necessary for any discerning person in general, let alone a righteous Muslim, 
to forsake any practice, custom, or convention which contradicts the teachings of Islam or which leads to bigotry, ignorance, or division. He must weigh all such matters with the balance of Islam's pristine directives so as to flee from the customs which are blameworthy and instead find safety in the refuge provided by Islam and tread the path of people of virtue, nobility, integrity, and sound insight. When a person puts blameworthy customs and conventions above Allah's directives or uses them as his point of reference instead of what Allah prescribed, that person does something very wrong and which could even make him leave Allah's religion altogether. We implore Allah to protect us from such an ending. May Allah grant all of you his mercy. You must continue to observe taqwa of Allah. Furthermore, you must keep in mind that when a person resists blameworthy customs by explaining realities and offering other sincere counsel, he is someone who seeks reform and strives to rectify the customs and practices that may have been ruined by the ignorant. In general, such a person will face opposition from the ignorant, but resisting them and continuing to seek reform is a category of struggling in Allah's path. If a person falls short in that regard, although he is able to work for reform, such an individual is negligent regarding the duty he bears and he exposes himself to being sinful. However, even worse is someone who tries to be close to people by ignoring the wrong they do or approving of the blameworthy practices and conventions they have. In conclusion, invoke Allah to grant his commendation and protection to our Prophet Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, and the mercy that Allah sent to us. Allah commanded us to do so in his statement. Indeed, Allah grants his commendation to the Prophet and the angels invoke Allah to grant him even further commendation. People of Iman invoke Allah to grant the Prophet commendation and to grant him protection as well. O oh, Allah, grant your commendation, protection, and blessings to your worshiping servant and messenger Muhammad, as well as his pure family and his wives, who are the mothers of the Mu'mineen. O oh, Allah, be pleased with the Prophet's four rightly godly successors, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali, as well as all of the companions and those who continue to follow their path until the day of reckoning. O oh, Allah, grant strength to Islam and the Muslims. O oh, Allah, grant strength to Islam and the Muslims. We can shirk and those engaged in it and defeat the oppressive, those who deny you, and all who are enemies of your religion. O Allah, grant us safety in our countries and rectify our authorities. Make our authorities people who are righteous. O Allah, Lord of all creation, make our leaders people who fear you, observe taqwa of you, and seek to please you. O Allah, bestow your guidance upon our leader, honor him by his obedience to you, raise your word by him, and make him a means of support for Islam and Muslims. O Allah, guide him, his deputy, his brothers, and his aides to do all that you love and are pleased with. Guide them so that they fulfill your commands and avoid your prohibitions. O Allah, Lord of all creation, guide the leaders of Muslims to act in accordance with your book and the sunnah of your prophet. Make them a source of mercy for your believing servants and unite them upon truth and guidance. O Allah, rectify the conditions of Muslims in all places. O Allah, protect their blood from being shed. Unite them upon guidance, truth, and the sunnah. Grant authority to the best among them and protect them from the worst among them. Spread safety, justice, and prosperity in their lands and protect them from all evils and turmoil. O oh Allah, we implore you to assist the security forces who defend the borders of our nation. O oh Allah, make their hearts firm and grant them victory over those who oppose them. O oh Allah, protect them from every direction, from in front, from the rear, from the right, from the left, from above, and even from beneath them. O oh Allah, accept their martyrs and cure their ailing. Indeed, you hear our prayers. O oh Allah, we ask you to exact retribution from the occupiers in Palestine, as they cannot escape you. O oh Allah, subject them to your wrath, which cannot be averted from a people who are criminals. O oh Allah, we ask you to protect us from them, and we seek refuge in you from their harms. O oh Allah, we implore you to guide us so that we repent to you and ask your forgiveness. O oh Allah, we implore you to pardon us for our wrongdoing and have mercy upon us. We have indeed wronged ourselves, and if you do not have mercy upon us, we shall indeed be among those who lose everything. Our Lord, grant us goodness in this world, grant us goodness in the hereafter, and save us from the torment of the hellfire. O oh Allah, we ask you to relieve all of the hardship that we may suffer, and we implore you for all goodness that lies with you. O oh Allah, grant your accommodation protection to our Prophet Muhammad.